We begin each journey of self-discovery as the fool. This traveler, our deeper self, embodies both our male and female sides. In complete innocence, the fool can explore the limitless possibilities within each moment. Eagerly, the fool tosses his pouch onto his back and leaps onto the road of life. His first encounter is with the magician, master over the four elements of the physical world. Fire, air, water, and earth. He fills the traveler's pouch with something of value, the fool's first awareness of power. Back to back with the magician stands the high priestess, who wields powers beyond that of the visible world. Hers is the etheric realm of inner and outer space. She offers the fool awareness of the connectedness of all things, and sends him forth to meet the Empress, who graciously greets him and places the gift of creativity in his bag. She is the life-giving, life-renewing impulse, the Earth Mother, who blends the elemental powers of the magician with the intuitive ways of the High Priestess. She introduces the fool to her consort, the Emperor, who commands the four corners of the Earth Kingdom she brings into being. He shares with our traveler the principle of order, the skill to structure and shape his own life, as well as influence the lives of others. The Fool accepts the gift, but immediately comes face to face with the Hierophant, who claims moral authority above the Emperor. Although just a man, he aspires to give structure to the realm of spirit and places the gift of tradition in the magic pouch. The problem of being just a man, or a just man, is encountered upon entering the realm of the lovers. Here one is faced with the eternal dilemma of whether to make choices based on desire or on the dictates of society. Are our hearts clouded or pure? The lovers give him a bittersweet offering for his pouch. The fool escapes from the lovers' dilemma in the chariot. Decisive action carries our hero forward as he fills his pouch with determination. He realizes that he alone must take control. Now he faces the greater challenges of the psychic plane. His next encounter is with a beautiful maiden. A lion rests at her feet. Her gift of strength carries with it the underappreciated power of gentleness. Our soul traveler is in a quiet mood when he meets the hermit, walking a path he has followed since passing his own test of strength. He gives the fool the power to identify and follow a true path. The wise hermit can give the impression that the path is sure, but the wheel of fortune teaches that change is the only constant companion on this spirit journey. Turning always, the wheel brings fortunes both good and bad. Sometimes neither wisdom nor strength will enable us to escape the fate we have created for ourselves. The welcome face of the Angel of Justice appears just as our hero is down on his luck. Her balance returns him to his center. The fool falls asleep in her arms, the scales of justice sliding into his pouch. When he awakens, he looks up to see a man, hanging by one ankle who seems strangely content. The fool rubs his eyes and looks again, because the man reminds him so much of himself. What is he awaiting? And why does he seem to enjoy being suspended? What does he see from that perspective? The fool decides to see for himself. As he hangs upside down, his pouch feels lighter and he realizes it is empty, as all the gifts he has received have become part of him. Unencumbered, he realizes that he too needs emptying. He lets go. Death is not what you believe. It is not to be feared. It is not an end, but a profound change. The fool crawls into his magic pouch to wait. Death reveals mysteries of life that the other gifts cannot. Emerging from the magic bag, he looks different, altered. The angel of temperance stops to give him a drink. When he eagerly asks what it is, she offers to teach him how to perfectly combine the ingredients. If he lands well, he will receive a rare gift, that of the art of patience and practice. 
He will need her powerful elixir in his pouch, for the host of our next stop on the journey is the Devil. The Devil can twist the words of all the lessons we have learned and trick us into believing that they are lies. He really wants to rob the fool of his treasures. Our hero knows he must first subdue the Devil before he can move on. In the ensuing struggle, secure structures are destroyed. The explosive demise of the tower signals a life-changing event. The outer world is shattered. Dazed, our hero walks away from the rubble, ready to restructure his whole nature. He falls asleep in a grassy field, and when he awakens, it is night. As he gazes up, the star above twinkles brightly, offering healing after the upheaval. In this calm after the storm, comes a sense of peace never before known. As he sees with his third eye for the first time, the fool discovers the star's true meaning, the unity of opposites. But the star is blazing too hot and burns out. Suddenly lost in darkness and afraid of the light he has just experienced, our hero sits paralyzed. Slowly he is able to see again. The moon now shines softly at his feet. She represents the bright heart of compassion and will guide him to his higher self, even through the pitch black that comes just before the dawn. He gathers her moonbeams in his pouch. By morning, the star's light reappears and rises high in the sky, rekindled and reborn into a finer radiance. Here all the fool's new treasures have become part of his radiance. There is a strong pull to linger in the sun's joy and vitality, but when our hero meets the Angel of Judgment, he recognizes a final call to purify the self. The fool places the pouch at his feet and steps neatly out of time and into the world. The old cycle has ended, and a new one begins at the next turn of the spiral. We must leave the soul traveler at this threshold and bid him farewell.